Imagine this, you're standing in the middle of the Nevada desert. The sun is blazing, the ground is cracked and dry, and in the distance, a machine roars to life. It's not a jet plane, but it sounds like one. A few seconds later, you hear a deafening sonic boom. That's not an aircraft, it's a car. A car that just broke the sound barrier. This is the story of Thrust SSC, the fastest car in the world. It's more than a record-breaking machine. It's a marvel of engineering, determination, and raw human courage. To truly understand its legacy, we must return to where it all began. In 1983, British engineer and adventurer Richard Noble set a new world land speed record with Thrust 2, hitting an incredible 633 miles per hour. For most people, that would be the end of the story. But for Noble, it was just the beginning. He had his eyes on something no one had ever done before, breaking the sound barrier on land. But there was a problem. Cars weren't supposed to go supersonic. At such speeds, ordinary aerodynamics breaks down. The air behaves differently, shock waves form, and one wrong angle could launch the car into the air like a missile. To solve this, Noble brought together a team of brilliant minds, including aerodynamics expert Ron Ayers. Ayers had spent years designing missiles and fighter aircraft, making him the perfect person to handle the challenge of keeping a car stable at Mach 1. Thrust SSC wasn't built like any car you've ever seen. For starters, it didn't have a conventional engine. Instead, it had two Rolls-Royce Spey turbofan engines, the same kind used in the F-4 Phantom jet fighter. Together, they produced a jaw-dropping 110,000 horsepower and 223 kilonewton of thrust. To put that in perspective, a Bugatti Chiron, the king of hypercars, has just 1,500 horsepower. Thrust SSC had over 70 times that power. Fuel consumption? Equally insane. It drank 18 liters of fuel per second. That's a full car tank gone in just two seconds. The machine itself was 16.5 meters long, weighed 10.6 tons, and was built more like a fighter jet with wheels than any recognizable car. Its cockpit was cramped, its controls aircraft-like, and its tires were custom-made solid aluminum wheels designed to withstand the extreme heat and stress of supersonic speed. The team didn't start with a supersonic run. They spent months testing the car, learning how it behaved at lower speeds, and tweaking its stability. The early tests took place in Jordan's Jaffer Desert before moving to the legendary Black Rock Desert in Nevada. By September 1997, pilot Andy Green, a Royal Air Force fighter pilot, had already set a new land speed record at 714 miles per hour, breaking Richard Noble's own record from 1983. But they weren't done yet. The real target was Mach 1. Driving thrust, SSC wasn't just a matter of hitting the gas. At transonic speeds between 600 and 700 miles per hour, the car became dangerously unstable. The shock waves created by the car's own speed caused sudden changes in drag and lift. Andy Green had to steer with incredible precision, making constant micro-adjustments to keep the car on course. He later described it as trying to balance a pencil on your fingertip while it's on fire. Any mistake could have been fatal, but Green was the perfect man for the job. As a fighter pilot, he understood how to control high-speed machines under pressure. The big day came on October 15, 1997. The desert was silent as the team prepared for the run. Green strapped into the cockpit, the engines roared to life, and thrust SSC thundered down the track. In less than 15 seconds, it went from 0 to 600 miles per hour. As the car approached 760 miles per hour, something extraordinary happened. The familiar crack of a sonic boom echoed across the desert. Andy Green had done it. On his first run, the car hit 759.333 miles per hour. Under official FIA rules, he had to turn around and do it again within 60 minutes. On the return run, he hit 763.035 miles per hour. For the first time in history, a car had broken the sound barrier. The world was stunned. People watching live reports couldn't believe that a wheeled vehicle, something that wasn't airborne, could travel faster than the speed of sound. Going that fast wasn't just about raw power. At such speeds, the smallest error could mean disaster. The wheels, for example, spun at over 8,500 revolutions per minute. The heat generated by friction and air resistance was intense enough to melt most materials. The aerodynamics had to be perfect, ensuring the car didn't lift off the ground. Ron Ayers spent countless hours running simulations, testing models, and making sure the car wouldn't become airborne when shockwaves formed. Without his expertise, Thrust SSC might never have left the drawing board. More than two decades later, Thrust SSC remains the fastest car on the planet, holding the official world land speed record of 763 miles per hour. No other car has officially beaten this record, although several teams have tried. Projects like Bloodhound LSR have aimed to push past 1,000 miles per hour, but funding issues and technical challenges have slowed their progress. Still, the dream of surpassing Thrust SSC lives on. Each new attempt builds on the lessons learned from Noble's team. Why does this story matter? Because it shows what happens when people refuse to accept limits. Richard Noble wasn't satisfied with fast enough. Ron Ayers took on a challenge that many called impossible. Andy Green risked his life to make history. Thrust SSC isn't just a car. It's a symbol of pushing beyond what we think is possible. It reminds us that even in an age of supercomputers and AI, there's something magical 
about raw human ambition combined with brilliant engineering that can shatter barriers literally. Will we see a car break 1,000 miles per hour in our lifetime? Possibly. Bloodhound LSR has already hit 628 miles per hour in testing, and its team believes they can reach 800 miles per hour or more. But the jump to 1,000 miles per hour isn't just about adding power. It's about creating an entirely new level of aerodynamics, safety, and precision. If anyone does it, they'll be standing on the shoulders of the Thrust SSC team, the pioneers who proved that the sound barrier wasn't just for aircraft. From Richard Noble's relentless dream to Andy Green's daring drive, Thrust SSC is more than a car. It's a story of audacity, innovation, and history in the making. Over 25 years later, it still holds the crown as the fastest car ever built, but records are made to be broken. One day, we might see a new supersonic machine hit 1,000 miles per hour. Until then, Thrust SSC's sonic boom will echo as a reminder of what's possible when passion meets engineering genius.